This is the fourth Sunday in Lent today, and a well, well, very well-known story you will hear from our gospel of the prodigal son. If you've been in Sunday school, you know that sometimes our discussion follows, do you identify with the dad, do you identify with the older son, or do you identify with the prodigal son? We will hear that lesson this morning.
In the name of God who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is from the book of Joshua, the fifth chapter. By celebrating the Passover and eating the produce of the promised land, instead of the miraculous manna that had sustained them in the desert, the Israelites symbolically bring their 40 years of wilderness wandering to an end at Gilgal. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We shall reap responsibly together from Psalm 32. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. This morning's second reading is from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. One way to describe the gospel is the promise that in Christ, everything is transformed into newness. All mistakes, all deliberate sins, all old history is reconciled with Christ's resurrection. This is Paul's strong message to the congregation in the city of Corinth. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away, see? Everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. 
Jesus tells a parable about a son who ponders his father's love only after he has spurned it. The grace he receives is beyond his hopes. That same grace is a crisis for an older brother who believes it is his obedience that has earned his place in the father's home. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he had squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has de devoured your property with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> this morning, we hear messages about reconciliation. And as Martin Luther might ask, what does this mean? A basic definition of reconciliation is to restore friendly relations between or to cause to coexist in harmony, or to make or show to be compatible. But how do we take steps to get there? If we are like the younger brother in today's gospel lesson, we have to swallow the bitter pill, admit wrong, and ask for help. If we are like the older brother, does reconciliation ever come? If we are like the father, we are already there, waiting. Sometimes reconciliation is taking a hard look at ourselves and recognizing when we are wrong. Sometimes relationships are toxic. While we can have reconciliation, it does not mean we have to move back into that relationship. Sometimes reconciliation is a matter of waiting it out, praying, and letting the Holy Spirit do their work. I am humbled by and grateful for the support I receive from you while I have been in student formation to become a deaconess. Just before I began my journey four years ago, I tried to come up with all kinds of reasons of why I could not possibly do this. Reasons like, I have so much baggage. 
and I don't have any kind of experience with this, and I don't have time for this. I've made too many mistakes, really big ones. I've not lived a holy life, yet here I stand, and I could still say all of that, and I could add to that list. Have any of you ever heard of the shame spiral? It's when an event triggers feelings of shame, embarrassment, guilt, or inadequacy. I feel like I can't do anything right. I think that everyone is judging me or doesn't like me. And then I start to gather the evidence that makes this true. I withdraw and isolate. It's like one of those spiral slides I used to enjoy as a child. And at the end waits anxiety and depression to give me a big welcome home. Perhaps you have experienced parts of the shame spiral. How on earth do we come out of it? It is big work. We can talk to others, even seek professional help. We can practice forgiveness of self. We can pray to have compassion for others. We can work on our self-talk and discover the root of our shame. We can ask God for forgiveness. It is ours. And through it all, he waits to give us a big welcome home. In her sermon last week, Pastor Scales shared a quote from Reverend Nadia Boltz Weber. God's grace is not just defined as God being forgiving to us even though we sin. Grace is when God is a source of fullness. Pastor reminded us that this is what returning into God's grace is. Being held, embraced, and kissed being loved in the arms of God. Being reconciled to God through Christ means that we are enough. We are enough to answer God's call. We are enough to show others kindness. We are enough, even when we slide down the shame spiral. In the lectionary Bible study, we discussed the following week's lessons, and so last week we talked about how we are both brothers. Finding ourselves failing due to poor choices and in need of help and mercy on one hand, and feeling resentful and angry about others' behavior on the other hand. And I wondered how we could possibly be like the Father in the parable. But of course we can. Through Christ, we have been able to do so. In the Corinthians reading this morning, we heard that if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors for Christ. As we continue our Lenten journey to the cross, Paul challenges us to reflect on the themes of new creation and reconciliation. Being reconciled to God through Christ means we have it in us to be forgiving to be compassionate, and to be merciful to others. The past four years as a diaconal student have encompassed a remarkable journey of grace, self-discovery, forgiveness of self, spiritual development, community, and a growing awareness of how and where we daily encounter Jesus and the opportunity to share the gospel. As I have journeyed through the formation of my identity as one who serves, I wonder now, what is our post-pandemic church identity? What is uncompromisable? What is embraceable? As we move forward, I believe one thing we must do is recognize and honor the loss. While there was a great feast and cause for celebration in return of the younger brother, there was also much loss. A father lost his son. A brother lost a companion and a co-worker to share the load. Loss of the inheritance. Things were not like they used to be. And even though the younger brother has returned, it doesn't make everything go back to normal, does it? Everything has changed. Whether we acknowledge it or not, we have been changed by the past two pandemic years. We embrace a church that is outside of this building, at home, and far-reaching beyond our membership. Yet we experience a loss of once full pews. We embrace a ministry of meal sharing with to-go meals and serving at the men's shelter that reach many more people in the community. 
and we also feel the loss of meals together in our fellowship hall. We celebrate no more pew ribbons, and what joy to experience communion at the rail and the sharing of peace. Still, we mourn the loss of our siblings who are no longer with us. Both and. Joy and loss. Reconciled. Grace. There is still so much right now for all of us, personally, communally, nationally, globally. And isn't this when we need God's grace the most? Grace when we have no defense. Grace to let go of all of our reasonings for refusal and resistance. Grace to sit down at the banquet when we feel we are unworthy. May we as new creations accept the gift of prodigal grace that God has given to us that makes us whole again. Amen. confess our faith through the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning, we keep Elaine Kearney in our prayers. She's recovering after surgery at Franciscan and Crown Point. And we remember Velma's nephew, Donald Obert, who is having heart tests. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Merciful God, hear us. Countries are divided and leaders are often, leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict, especially in Ukraine and Russia. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving, especially those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God, please join me in the next petition. For Griffith Lutheran Church, help us to use our many blessings to grow our church, to make a difference in our lives and in our community. Help us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities through love and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, confident that the steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe, your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for everyone to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Taste and be filled. body of, of Christ given for you.
blood of Christ shed for you.
let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Please check out your bulletin, the Hammond Rescue. We need uh, some volunteers for May the 7th and 21st. We meet here at 1115. Uh, we are collecting Bibles. There's a large box out there. And some of you may have Bibles you haven't used, but you had when you were younger and you got a new one and it's sitting there and you're really not using it. And so we have a place that we take used Bibles. And so we are collecting them. If you have any, uh, there's a box there for you to uh, put them in. The Lenten dinners we are still having, and please call your order in, call that you're going to be here uh, at the office. The rummage sale uh, is April the 29th and 30th, and I believe they start collecting the 25th? No, 24th. They start collecting, you bring in, April, yes, April 24th. April 4th. Well, shall we start again? <laughs> The rummage sale is April 29-30, and you start bringing your things in April 4th. Okay, that, should, that may be in your bulletin, that may be where I got it. <laughs> Hopefully it is. Next Saturday is uh, Carrie's consecration right here, and we're very happy about that. So you all are invited at 11 o'clock. If you stay for lunch, I would like for you to give us a call so we can... Uh, uh, say that you're going to be here. So 11 o'clock next Saturday will be uh, Carrie's consecration. Please stand. By the way, she said the bishop was almost able to come. He was that close. And so <laughs> I said, well, he can preach and he can preside and he can. <laughs> so maybe that's why he didn't come. But he's got... <laughs> He's got, a, he's got another commitment, but he did tell her that he was going to try his best, but he gave her a call and said he's not able to be here. So that's a disappointment. That would have been thrilling. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majesty, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen.